Our first painting is by Ray Sloan Bredin. It's called After the Rain. It was painted in 1913. And with each of these, I would invite you, if you're interested, it's a great opportunity for some more learning, to explore the uh, life of the artist, learn a little bit about where they lived, and perhaps even where these paintings came from. Some of the paintings, you can actually get more information about the scene they're depicting by doing a little bit of research work, and I'd be happy to help you with that if you wanted some extra guidance on learning more about the scene that you see in the painting. So here's the first painting. In case you're not sure what you're seeing here, this is a canal and the tow path. And if you get a screen with good resolution, you'll see that on the right, on the towpath, there's a figure with what looks like two mules, and they have a tow rope, presumably pulling the barge that you see in the background. And then over on the left, you can see a figure with a pole or an oar paddling a boat, the water, the light, the leaves, lots of things in that. The next painting is called The Burning of Center Bridge. It was painted by Edward Redfield, and it depicts a scene that actually took place. Uh, on the Delaware River, about 45 miles north of Philadelphia, in 1923, there was a night where the very important bridge crossing the Delaware uh, burned completely. And Edward Redfield was heading home when he saw this scene and saw the fire, and somebody asked him, I wonder what it would be like to paint that, and he set right to work in capturing the scene with sketches, and then completed a painting of that particular event and scene. So we'll move forward here and see what it looks like. Here you can see the burning of the bridge. You can see the light. There are some firefighters that are spraying water. There are sparks flying. Those are stone piers in the river. You can see steam rising where the water is hitting the fire and the heat is actually uh, present there as well. Lots of things in this scene, very dynamic, lots of light, smoke, steam, all the things that you might be able to find. So another great painting. George Sauter was another Bucks County painter who painted lots of winter scenes and quite a few uh, night paintings. And so this next painting was untitled, uh, painted in 1949, and he, he didn't give it a title, but people refer to it sometimes as just night snow scene, and you can see why. The painting is lit by what might presumably be moonlight. There are shadows in the snow. We can see lights in the stone cabin. There's glass in the windows, brick chimneys. We can see some wooden clapboard, snow on the roofs, a sycamore tree, uh, stars in the background, lights in other houses on the hill. There's a bridge on the right side. There's a shed or a barn-like building on the left. Lots of things in this image to work with. The next painting is a portrait. Uh, Violet Oakley and Edith Emerson were both artists who shared a studio in the 1930s and beyond. And the portrait of Violet Oakley uh, is undated, and it says before 1961, but this was almost certainly quite a bit before 1961, and shows Violet Oakley as a young woman sitting in this beautiful space. So let's take a look at that. So here you can see, probably in the 1930s or maybe 40s, Violet Oakley seated, there's a bowl of fruit, there are flowers in vases, there are candlesticks, curtains, uh, a lot of different objects here to work with as you think about things that you might write about, and a very, very colorful portrait indeed. Fern Coppage is a very famous Impressionist painter, and this next scene comes also from Bucks County, and it's called The Road to Lumberville. It has a lot of things in it, uh, and yet we'll think a little bit about people, so here we go. There are houses here, and it's a winter scene. You can see the road, you can see some tracks in the road, you see shadows, you can see the, the bricks, the windows, the glass, the trees, the snow, the shrubs, the rocks. Uh, what you don't see in this are people. There are certainly other living things, so biological topics can be found. Uh, we can't be certain what species of trees these are, um, or even exactly what season it is, but it's a beautiful painting where many, many of our ideas from the year could be identified. The next painting is by Walter Emerson Baum. It was painted in 1940, and it comes from Easton, Pennsylvania, on the Lehigh near Allentown. It's much more of an industrial scene. So it looks like a winter scene. We can see the winter light and the absence of uh, green foliage, although it's a little hard to tell because it's a very industrially developed 
region of Easton and we see smokestacks and warehouses, we can see railroad lines and the steam clouds and the gray smoke almost certainly would come from a steam engine that is burning coal as a power source to move the locomotive. You can see there are signal lights on a uh, on a sign above the railroad tracks. There's a bridge that crosses the river. There are the hills. Um, lots of things in this image as the smoke and steam rise into the cloudy overcast sky above. The next painting was done in 1935 by Ben Soloway. It's called Ray Seated and the subject of the portrait is a woman, Rachel Landis, who is the spouse, Ben Soloway, married Rachel Landis shortly after meeting her in 1930 and made many sketches and paintings and portraits of her over their many years together. So it's a beautiful portrait and has lots of things to look at. Here you can see Ray seated in the green dress. You see a ring on her finger. You see the chair she's sitting in. There's a painting on the wall behind her. So I love this painting of a figure in front of a painting, uh, but lots of things that one could work with here, again, in a portrait that centers as much as any on a person as being the place where many of the ideas and topics might be found. And the last painting in our gallery was by Jesse Drew Bear. It's an interior from Antibes in 1953, and this is a very vibrant, colorful painting with many, many things in it. There's a lot to look at here, so we'll take a quick peek at that. Here's a, a parlor or a living room space, and you can see an artist painting a chair and a cat. We have the cat sitting on the chair as the subject. You can see the palette of paint colors. You can see another portrait of what looks to be maybe fish. We have a table with flowers and a vase and a picture. We have the sofa. We have the cups and the chairs and the lights and the door. Many different things to work with in this lovely image.